Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's KB5MIQ, big boy. We're going to, this video, like I've told y'all before, my audio visual skills ain't that great. So this video may have some starts and stops in it, maybe even a splice or two in it. But we're going to build a two meter, three element Yagi out of an old TV antenna parts that uh, WD5HKV gave me. We're using an old design he found as a young man and some antenna books he's long since lost, can't find them now, but he's had managed to remember this plan out and it seems to work good. So I'm going to start and stop this video at different points in the in the, while I'm trying to assemble this and hopefully we can uh, film it when I check it with my Nano VNA. But I'm going to pause it here a second and uh, show you what we're going to build it out of. Y'all excuse uh, my floor in here in my office. This is where I work on everything from radios to guns. And this is the pieces of metal we're going to use it out of. This boom is too big, too long, but I'm going to cut it after I get the antenna made for it. So I'm going to pause it here a second. Okay, I got ham radio cap there messing with my elements, but I've got the elements cut and I've got the end, the middles marked. So now, on the dimensions Jeff gave me, let me flip this. On the dimensions he gave me, the director's going to be three foot one inch. The driven elements three foot three inches, and the reflectors three foot six inches with ten inch spacing. So we're going to try to get them mounted up. And I'll talk to y'all about the feed point here in a little while. All righty. And that's what everybody needs is ham radio cat helping them. Okay. There we are, the, sort of the finished product. Fix to do the, the feed point, and I'll restart the video there in a minute. One thing you'll notice about this antenna, the driven element is not isolated from the boom. That has something to do with the type of feed point we're fixing to put on this. Let me go back here. All right. WD5HKV refers to this feed point as a gamma match, but by his own admission, he says it may not be a true gamma match. It's just what the guy who wrote the plans up kind of referred to it as. So what we're going to have here, we'll take a piece of 12 gauge copper wire. We'll put a straight six inch run of it with a one inch bend over to the driven element. It's one inch parallel to it. Three wraps around the driven element. The center conductor goes on right here, and the braid attaches straight to the boom and keep them isolated probably with tape or however we're going to do this. But I'll show you the finished product here in a few minutes. Okay, that's the feed line before I tape it up. The braid stacks strictly to the boom, the driven elements to the boom, and that little coil is what's going to be the feed point, and that center conductor will be taped up to where it doesn't make any contact and uh, we're gonna tighten everything up and see how it looks here in a minute. Okay, that's the finished product. We're gonna see how it works here in a little bit, run a nano VNA check on it. I'll have to trim this boom off while I install it on my tower, but we're gonna see how this works. Hey everybody, it's KB5MIQ Big Boy, day two working on this uh, antenna and uh talked with hkv last night we kind of come up with an improvement that really made a difference on this thing and i'm going to flip it around and show it to you again i apologize for my audio visual skills so let's see what we can show okay this is my nano vna 144 to 148 megahertz it is got an excellent swr it's it up to 2.8 to 1 at the high end of the band but if you notice yesterday, I had a piece of bare copper wire for the feed point. And uh, we had made them like that in years past, but Jeff made this one with insulated 12. And my SWR yesterday, the lowest I could get it was two to one. And it went over out of over three to one at both ends of the band. So change that to piece of insulated 12 and it really made a difference. I don't have a third hand to scale this thing for you, but trust me, it did make a big difference in the SWR. Uh, let me stop here. Just 
Okay, everybody. It's Daily Five MIQ, big boy. I apologize. That video is going to be atrocious, I know. But that did make a difference on that. And Jeff and I were talking last night at a round table. He had read that a true gamma match is isolated off the driven element. So we were thinking now that our past use of bare wire, because I remember the SWR was a little high on it, but we used them. But now this and that just made a great big difference. And that's with it sitting in here in my office. I'm going to take it outside and run it again here in a minute. Or I may just go ahead and put the thing up and check it with a MFJ meter or my uh, radio meter when I get it up in the air, probably tomorrow. But I will uh, probably, if I don't finish this video with actual results of it, I'll put it in the next one. But that's one of the good things about this hobby, uh, building antennas cheaply. Jeff had that antenna give to him. He had enough pieces out of it to give DLX and myself, and he built a three element out of it. And I'm going to put it up about 50 foot in the air and see how it works, see if I can get into some of the repeaters I used to get out and not be able to get into. I've noticed, and I may say this word wrong, uh, that I've used the term ground wave, and then somebody told me it was line of sight, and I don't know, anyway, you, you, whatever term you want, but largely in VHF communications, you're using line of sight, whether you're line of sight to a repeater or to another station. Now, DLX and myself are approximately 14 miles apart. He's got a vertical up, I've got a vertical up, and we're good S5 on each other on simplex. We couldn't hear Jeff. He didn't have his antenna, he had a vertical up. We didn't really couldn't hear him. He's about 30 miles from me probably and a good 20 something from Cody. He built this antenna, hooked it up to a five watt handheld, climbed up on the roof of his house, which I got a picture of that, by the way. I'll figure out a way to put it in here one day. But we were able to hear him at S4, S5. So now, Reed, I bring that up. Terrain and your location makes a big difference. When I first got my very first ticket at my first QTH, I had, I've always been push up pole bound except one bad experience with a tower that there's a video about that if you go through my library of videos but i've always been 40 to 50 foot in the air with an antenna and if i had two antennas on a push-up pole one of these was at the top of it and there were repeaters i could hit i could hit in a mean arkansas on top of rich mountain i was a repeater in paris i could get into several repeaters of the wide coverage repeater in shreveport i could get into real easily Six seven machine, I believe. I moved oh uh, in ninety seven about probably no more than four miles from that location in the same county and couldn't hit a lot of the repeaters I could hit. And now we're gonna see if this will help me get back into them. So anyway. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do some antenna building. It's fun, it's cheap. I mean, I looked at three element Yaggies online and the cheapest one I found was like $60, $75 plus shipping. And I built this one out of the scrap Jeff gave me and the scrap parts I had around the house. No money in it at all. And I believe it's going to work just fine. Appreciate everybody who subscribed to the channel. Uh, please leave me some, keep leaving some comments. I enjoy, I try to answer everybody's comment and try to answer everybody's email. Remember your club pages, uh, Four States Amateur Radio Club, Shreveport Amateur Radio Club, Dallas Amateur Radio, Cowtown Amateur Radio, lots of good information there on those pages. Ham Radio Flea Market and Trading Post, Ham Radio, Amateur Radio Elmers, Texas Amateur Radio, all good Facebook pages for information. Main Trading Company, Paris, Texas, good outlet to buy your ham gear. Once again, thanks to everybody who's listened to me. I appreciate all who subscribed to the channel. This is KB5MIQ, Big Boy, 73.